hello everyone. It's time to start our uh, JIC talk. Please have a seat. Uh, thank you for coming to today's JIC talk. My name is Om Jin Park. I'm so glad to be here as your host today. Before we get started, please make sure your cell phone is on the silent mode. Thank you. When you first arrive, you should have received a piece of paper uh, like this one. When you, uh, if you have any questions, please write it down on this paper. Your questions will be answered by Joy Nues during the Q&A portion of today's Jersey Talk, led by one of our English-speaking Jersey Talk volunteers. Now, I would like to introduce you to today's Jersey Talk speaker, Joy Nues. Today's talk is titled, Work Highlights, Moments and Memories, Life as the First Messenger GIC Coordinator. Joy has put in a lot of effort for GIC as the coordinator, and GIC has been able to grow remarkably through his passion. It is, it is honored to hear to his story and, and thought about his last two years at the GIC. Now, without any further hesitation, let us all welcome Joy Nue. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is wonderful to see each of you here and those also listening to the video after this GIC talk as well. It means a lot to me that you spent a little bit of your time here at the GIC and to also hear about my experiences here at the GIC. It's been an amazing, wonderful roller coaster that I'm glad I get to share with you today. Uh, I entitled specifically Highlights, Moments, and Memories because the highlights are the best parts. There are a lot of things that have happened during my time here at the GIC. I can only share so much. If I told you everything, we would be here until maybe midnight, 1 a.m., and I don't think you want to stay that long. Moments, because there were very specific moments in time that meant so much to me as a person and meant so much to people people here in this audience, as well as other people. And memories. This is what I will be taking with me. Unfortunately, this chapter has come to an end for me. This is my final day of work at the GIC, is today. So not only am I giving my final GIC talk, but I'm also packing my bags and leaving afterwards. But not just from Korea. Not yet. That's coming later. I'll tell you about my plans as well. <clears throat> I wanted to show you these two pictures because they mean also moments in specific times. Unfortunately, a lot of my pictures are a bit dark, so if you squint really hard, you'll be able to see the images that are there. Um, this picture was taken when I came to the GIC one day in January of 2014. I was coming in just to talk um, with a few different coordinators about different programs. And they said, oh, Joey, you should be in this picture. You're going to join us. I said, okay, sure, why not? So I joined their picture that they were taking uh, at that time. And this picture was taken just yesterday. This was our staff final dinner to say goodbye to me and to thank me for the contributions. So kind of a whole encompassing two bits, two parts. And you see, it's not about me. It's about these people. Some are the same, some are different. But it's the people that make the difference here at the GIC. And that's the one thing I want to stress so much, is the community here is so beautiful and so precious. And you're part of it, too. Well, let me give a little bit of instruction for myself. This picture was the first picture I could find on Facebook. One of the first pictures, and this was taken during my freshman year. Sometimes I've shown pictures of myself in the past, and people are like, who's that? Because we look different. <laughs> and then this is a picture that was taken a couple months ago as well. Just pictures of me. I was born in America, and I've been raised in six different states. I've lived a life that is going from one place to another. I haven't been actually in one home, one setting, for more than six years. That's just part of life. That's just part of my identity. And that's not a bad thing. That's just how it is. 
The school I went to was called Asbury University, and I majored in two degrees, uh, had majors in two different degrees. I wanted to challenge myself. Um, in high school, I took regular classes, so I didn't want to push myself. But instead, in college, I said, well, why not try to do two majors? And I did it. And it was a lot of work, but both of the degrees, both majors that I received were well worth it and have actually prepared me for the work that I have done at the GIC. <clears throat> On top of America, I've traveled to 11 countries, and I hope this number goes higher and higher and higher until it's, what, 140-something? <laughs> How many countries are in the world? And I've lived here in Guangzhou only. I have not been in Seoul. I've not been in Daegu or Busan. I've only been in here for the last three and a half years. And a lot of people are asking me this question. Sorry for those in the back that cannot see it. I'll read it to you. And why the hair change? <laughs> those of you that know me know my natural hair color is not this. It's brown. When I was uh, part of the Midsummer Night's Dream performance that the Guangzhou Performance Project um, ran in November, I started growing out a beard. And I've never grown my beard out, ever. But I started to see specks of orange. And I was like, that's weird. No one in my family has orange hair. Not even those who have had white hair. They've always had either brown or blonde. Why orange? And it just was so intriguing to me that I thought, well, maybe I should dye it. Maybe I should just try it and see what it looks like. I talked to a couple people and they said, yeah, do it. You might as well do it. Just try it. And so I did it on Monday. And so that's why I have my hair the way I do. All right. So before I talk about my job, I do need to share how I learned about the GIC. This is a moment in time. September 16, 2012 was the day that I came to audition for Six Plays, which was a <clears throat> self-writing audition uh, for the Guangzhou Performance Project. I had heard of the GIC, but I came specifically to the GIC when it was in the Jung Il building, not here, but a block away from here, because I wanted to audition for theater. I've always wanted to do theater. I've always wanted to be involved in projects, so I thought, well, why not? It's a new opportunity. This had been only about a month since I'd been in Guangzhou. And so I auditioned, but I had to go through the GIC first. I first came in, I was like, wow, this is amazing. An international center that offers library books for members, that offers so many great assistants and so many amazing programs. There's so much here. Why not? become a member? Why not be a part of this amazing organization? So I didn't even need the explanation. Someone did give it to me. Her name is Nana. She's a coordinator here that's on maternity leave. And she was the one who introduced me to the GIC. She gave everything instruction-wise. And I said, why not? Why not start? But those who know me know that I tend to initiate. And I try to do work. I try to do as much as I can whenever I can. And so I started volunteering. These are the dates that I did volunteering. I started very quickly after I found that there was a post saying about the library that people needed assistance uh, for reorganizing the library. And so I helped up until the start of my employment here at the GIC. And then, Guangzhou News, I had known of this publication right when I came here initially. And I was like, oh, finally, a publication that I can be a part of. My major is journalism. What a great way to be involved. And I started in February of the next year, 2000. Um, sorry, the date's wrong here, but it's 2013 to January of 2016. During my entire time while I've been here, I have been a volunteer for Guangzhou News. I have not been paid for my services. This is something that I have done on my own free will, that I wanted to do. And then I started getting proofreading assignments because coordinators had seen my work with GIC Library and also with Wangju News. I really wanted and desired to have the chance to be able to help other people too with other projects. And so that's how I started and learned about the GIC. Now, the work part. 
On December 23, 2013, I was invited by Dr. Shin and his wife, Kay Park, and my mom was here, and myself, we went to a dinner at Dining Day Dio. The four of us talked, had a great conversation. Dr. Shin talked with me a little bit about, you know, there's a possibility that we could hire someone to work here as a coordinator that's international. And we would like this person to work specifically with the World Human Rights Cities Forum. The more he talked about it, the more I was like, yeah, this is what I want. This is what I would love to do. And I was at a perfect time when he asked me in December. I was about to leave my previous job as a Hogwan teacher. I worked there for about 17, 18 months. And I was just about ending that position when Dr. Shin asked me if I would like to be a part of this organization. And little did I know when I said yes, I said yes to people, I said yes to this organization. I said yes to so many incredible things. I even said yes to this program. I said yes to giving you this GIC day. This picture was taken GIC day. And these are some incredible volunteers and even staff, one staff member is here as well in this picture. And then this was a picture that is all of our staff members last year. I said yes to all of this. I looked back and these are the different dimensions of my GIC talk. Those in the back, don't worry, I'm going to go through each of the specific programs in general. But just so that you can see, these are the different areas and the different programs that I was a part of and that I had the opportunity to be blessed by and also to give a blessing to. <clears throat> the GIC Library was one of the first programs that I received and I was so pleased to be able to not only just help as an assistant, as a volunteer, but then I got the chance to be the coordinator to actually make the decisions for what happens on the GIC library. I started in the Jungyo building, and then I came here. And mind you, my, all of my volunteering was in the Jungyo building. It's across the street from YMCA, for those who don't know. And then all of my work has been here. So it's been very compartmentalized, very division-oriented. I managed a 26 new book genre system that I had the chance to help get the help from other volunteers. And I'll share about that in a little bit. So. I encouraged eight GIC library volunteers to do the best work that they could. And they were amazing. I spoke only English. I did not give instructions in Korean. I couldn't give instructions in Korean. And they took what instructions I gave in English, translated it when they needed it, and did the work the best that they could. One team, the first team I managed, helped with the poetry slam that was here last year. And it was, those who don't know, a poetry slam is a chance for people to write their own poems and to be judged by the audience and the panelists to choose the best poems. It was in this room, about 100 people were in this room to listen to the poetry slam. This was an idea that they created with the Council of Other International <coughs> Volunteers as well. And the current team <clears throat> that will continue until March has been doing final checking. When I was a volunteer in the Jongyo building, I helped specifically with categorizing and getting new genres set up. But when we came here, we didn't have that system. We didn't get that chance to recheck our books. So both international volunteers who are here today and also Korean volunteers have helped to check list after list of books. And I really appreciate just how much work that they did with managing and organizing those files. I grew in knowledge of the inner workings of what happened in the GIC library. As a volunteer, I only had limited knowledge. I only had a little scope of what happens with the GIC library. When I became a staff member and the coordinator in charge of the GIC library, I was like, oh, that's why this doesn't work. That's why this is okay. This is why we do it this way. And I learned a lot more. And I really appreciated that, that I got that chance to really understand more about certain issues and certain complexities with the library. 
I initiated the ongoing book sale that you can see here, and after this GIC talk, you're welcome to look through some books as well. All profits benefit the GIC. And when I created this, my desire was that books would be given at discounted rates for people to enjoy. I don't believe in selling books for high prices, because it's not going to work. And it's a gift to the community that they're able to then take those books. So those books are in, on the first floor. This was something that I thought, this would be a great gift to give to the GIC, and also to the community as well. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and the last is, while heavy, the books are heavy. Um, Jungmin, Hansanin, and I were working through the books just this morning and lifting them. Oh, it takes so much work. <laughs> and I don't exercise right now in my life, so this is not also a good time for me to be lifting books. But they are heavy, they carry a lot of weight, but every book is precious. And if anything, I love reading. Maybe you don't. That's because you haven't found your genre yet. You haven't found your specific book yet. It's out there. You just have to find it. I have two pictures. The first is from the Jungyo building. <clears throat> you see me working, going crazy. This is a day that I helped um, organize international volunteers to help sort the library. We had to take all of these books from Jung Il to here, put them in boxes, and double check that they were there. So it was a lot of work, but I enjoyed it. It was a refreshing opportunity to see so many international residents. Most of them are gone. They've moved on to the next chapter of their lives. But that they were part in that moment on that Saturday to help with this project. And then this is a picture of our two current volunteers. I have desired very much to have two types of volunteers that help with the GIC library, Korean and international. And it builds friendships. These are friendships that will last for ages to come. And it's always a desire of mine that people are brought together because of their love for volunteering, their love for helping other people. The next was proofreading. One of the things I love is double checking what someone else has done. So someone did the hard work of translating everything from Korean into English, and then I check in. And I love it. Most people look at this and they're like, oh, that sounds awful. I'm not most people. I know I'm not. But that's something that I love. It's part of my major. I enjoy putting into practice what I had learned in university. Because of my journalism major, I had had the chance to be an editor, to be a writer, to help people with their writing to be the strongest it could be. And I assisted with a variety of topics. So many different things. One page letters, even one yesterday that I helped with, and also 86 pages of a thesis. I've done actually two or three of those while being here at the GIC, which take a lot longer. Sometimes this can take up to, you know, seven minutes to maybe 20, 25 minutes, these take a couple of days. <laughs> so it's a chance to be able to look at a variety of work. And I always learned something new. I treasured what I learned from the opportunities. I read so many different things. I read so many different letters, so many different um, topics, and even things that aren't my specialty, that aren't something that I really enjoy. I learned so much from all of it. <clears throat> what I did learn at the GIC is that anyone at any time could ask for my help. That happened a lot, but I loved it. I love that with proofreading, I was the expert. I was the one that people came to just for second opinions. Not for the pride factor, but for the opportunity to help people is what I enjoyed so much. And I looked look forward to helping in the future, honestly. Dr. Shin, Minsu, Kansanin, Xingxin Kansanin. I know there's others in the room. If you have projects, please email them to me. I want to help. I have two pictures. The first is the uh, document that I talked about, the 86 page. It was a book that actually was printed. And I got the chance to proofread this in two days. On top of all my other work, a person came to me and said, oh, I need help, I need to get this checked. 
And, but it was fun to learn about it. It was a really hard subject because it was about those, um, the Japanese coming over and kind of invasion and what had happened to the Korean people and what hurt had happened in previous generations. So it was a hard subject, but I enjoyed what I learned. I enjoyed what I read. And this is the 518 archives. If you go outside of this building, we have an alleyway. If you keep going until the very end of that alleyway, you turn left. Keep walking past Woody Bank, I think it is, and there's an establishment that's about May 18th. I had the honor and the privilege to check everything that's in English that's in this building. Again, it's not pride, but instead it's an opportunity to say that my, my work was very various. There was so much that I was able to help with. Books, displays, and other documents as well. The World Human Rights Cities Forum Discussion Groups. Oh, mouthful. That was the, one of the main reasons why I was brought in, and one of the most amazing opportunities that I had to work here at the GIC. I developed my own human rights vision first. When I realized that I was going to be part of managing groups and bringing people in to be a part of the Human Rights Cities Forum, I knew I had to develop my own first. And it was a sense of desiring to help people where they are. So it was a kind of self-identity check. What am I doing? What is something that I'm doing in my life? Because how can I ask other people to do what I'm suggesting if I don't do it myself? We have to live by what we preach, by what we speak. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I assisted with training over 200 international and Korean residents for over two years. Some of them are in this room today as well. They came in, they sat in workshops, they received training, and then they went to the actual forum, which was in May the last two years at the Kim Dae-jun Convention Center. They learned and they earned. They took what they received and then they applied it into real life. And I worked with incredible, great teams of people. Not just staff members, but the volunteers as well. I met so many amazing people at the World Human Rights Cities Forum. And I also developed and practiced public relations in an international setting. I got to interact with people from France, from Belgium, from the Netherlands, from Japan, multiple other countries that I would have never had had I not accepted this position and said yes. And I learned one of the major points was that the voice and lists need to be heard. We have these conferences that are very important and very crucial, but we have to also develop and help on our own scale. We have to reach out. And that's uncomfortable. That's risky. That's dangerous. But it's such a blessing and such a necessity that we need to develop in ourselves. The first picture is of myself with two in, an intern and volunteer and also a previous instructor here. What I had as a chance to do for my first time developing the program was to go to universities and to share about what human rights are and how people can get involved. And through that, we recruited about maybe 20 to 40 in, uh, Korean uh, students that were participating in the actual forum. And the second picture is an excellent conversation that I had with three amazing volunteers for the forum, as well as a woman named Marquis. And she is from the Netherlands. She's a human rights uh, university student, and she's developing her thesis to create a sense of what can be done for the human rights in the Netherlands. It was one of these spontaneous conversations that was a moment, and I was like, wow. I'm so glad that I took a break from my work with the World Human Rights Cities Forum and got to listen. And she was very inquisitive. I think that I ask a lot of questions, she asks more. <laughs> and those that know me, know who I am, and know how question, questioning I am, She's even more so, but not in a bad way, in a compassionate way. And it was incredible to hear these perspectives. And we're all speaking in English, 
and we're all sharing. That is where human rights starts. When we have conversations with the people, when we have conversations and help where we can with different perspectives. And this is a picture I got to take in Hiroshima. I got the chance to be able to share this information about the World Human Rights Cities Forum in Hiroshima, Japan. I got to actually take off time for work to be able to go overseas to share about what I did for the Human Rights Cities Forum. I didn't include a picture of that, but I did include this picture because, I mean, that's an incredible opportunity to be able to do that through work. I've been very blessed here. Very blessed. <clears throat> I also helped with the GIC Junior Talk and the Guangzhou Model United Nations. The first one was one that was created from scratch. Dr. Shin had always wanted to have something that was like this, but for younger people, to be speaking, to be able to engage in different type of topics and conversation, but not in this style, where people are sitting in a classroom and they're talking. So I got the chance to inspire and to help 12 students initially with that program. And then there was a council of 40 with the Guangzhou Model United Nations. And that was a wonderful privilege. Because I was inspired by what I saw. This is the future generation of Korea. Sitting in this room, talking about different topics, and changing. Changing themselves and wanting to change. And yes, they were working with fictitious scenarios. They were representing countries that weren't their own. But they really valued what they learned. And they're precious. And I love that there are youth here in the audience. Today because this is the generation, the next generation of Koreans. And I offer guidance for programming structure for both programs, being able to just assist by seeing. And by this time, both programs, I had been here at the GIC a little bit longer. So I've been able to give a little bit more advice. <clears throat> and I recognize that both my time and their time is precious. One of the most greatest gifts that I have learned and heard so many times while being in Korea, it's not your money. It's not what you can do for someone. It's the time you can give to someone that's so precious, that's so amazing. And these middle school and high school students don't have time. They have time to study, they have time to go to school, they don't have time to rest and relax. Can I get an amen? You're here? It's hard, you're here, yes. It's hard, but I'm so glad that I got this chance to be a part of their lives for that moment, that time. This was one of the pictures for the GIC Junior Talk taken early in the program. And you see that there are other volunteers and staff members included in this picture. Just an amazing group of youth that came every Saturday in the mornings and talked about human rights topics and advanced how they could speak in English with each other and in the future. And then this is one of the final pictures that we got to take with um, the Model United Nations. This was after we were done. Most of these students had like one or two hours of sleep like crazy stuff was happening, and just so many smiles, so much amazing potential for the future that I know will continue as well. This program, the GIC Talk program, is one that I guided 51 times. 51 times I counted it. And most people don't come 51 times to GIC Talks. <laughs> Only the coordinators and the volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come here every single week. And it means so much to me that they're here to support the program. I helped prompt a lot of speakers to give worthy topics. When I see that someone has an amazing topic, I say, yeah, you should give a GIC talk. Most of the time they respond, mm, I'm not really interested. But I push. I say, you've got something here. You have something to share. Don't stop. Don't say no to this. Please don't. Because you're saying no to, you could be saying no to one of the best experiences that you could have. There's people in this room that have given GIC talks. I know that, and I really appreciate that. And it was more important to me that we 
presented material that brought people in, that people were to, able to enjoy the different topics as well. So I supported 12 volunteers, current and former, and two interns. I really appreciate that. The support was to give them advice, to help them do their jobs the best that they could. And I enjoyed getting to know them. Not, not just giving work, not just giving the chance to grow, but I enjoy getting to know them as people. Every single volunteer that comes here is so precious, and I, I just love that I got the chance to interact with two different teams of volunteers. <clears throat> I advocated to have informative presentations. Like I said earlier, it was more important to me that we don't just talk about dull stuff. It was stuff that mattered. There were topics that were interesting and intriguing and left people maybe changing their perspective a little bit in themselves. What's the point of presenting something if it doesn't change you, if it doesn't transform you? That's what I wanted. That's what I desired. And I wanted to strengthen our program's welcoming spirit. We have a tendency, everyone, I'm not just saying the GIC, but everyone, that we get into a routine, that we get stuck. But we're with people, and people are so valuable, so incredible to get to know. That that was more important to me, to have that welcoming spirit as well. This was from a GIC talk here, the most I, that we had. It was a board game GIC talk. I had no idea we were going to have this many people. We had to bring out tables. This whole entire space was full of people. They stayed for an incredible GIC talk given by Dave St. John. And it was just about board games. And then we played them. What great way to have a talk. And then the next one that I pointed out is from Lex Burr. She is an American who now lives in Texas. And I knew when I met her and when she said that she had a topic that she was interested in talking about, I wanted her to speak. She has a presentation similar to my style very much looking at something and then speaking about it. She looked at a book and she could just share the best moments that make you want to just pick up a book and read it. That's how intriguing her presentation was. Every single GIC talk that's been here that I've managed, I've loved, I've learned from. I just happened to choose two to show you the people and the impact the size and also the depth of one particular GIC talk. But every single GIC talk has been incredible and I've enjoyed each one of them. With Guangzhou News, <clears throat> again as a volunteer, I helped as a copy editor and a proofreader. I saw some articles the first time and then it had been edited a little bit and that was the second way that I saw it. So I saw articles both ways. Again, I did this as a volunteer. I didn't do this as part of my job. I wanted to do this. <clears throat> I did serve as editor twice when the current editors were on vacation, both in August of last year and February's edition, which is available now. You can take a look at Sometimes, because of my ability to work here and to know what was going on, I got the first choice of writing articles. So not only did I still do the editing process, but I did the writing too. And with that, I reported on so many different topics, so many different fields that I really enjoyed and really learned from too. And as always, with any position, I advanced my journalism skills. I kept going and I kept building a repertoire. <clears throat> this is a press pad badge, sorry it's dark, for the university ad that I got the chance to be able to go and to share with uh, different people and to um, report on a couple of different stories. I have to admit, I didn't go to any sporting event. <laughs> I'm such a bad person. <laughs> this is an international event with sporting and I didn't get to go. I was too busy here. I had too much work I had to do here. But what I did get to do were report on what the athletes did after their events or before. And that was really cool. I went to an orphanage where American athletes got to just interact with the children. I got to profile an Australian athlete 
and I also got to just meet with other athletes as well. Many came into our global lounge, so I got to meet people from all over the world. And I got to interview Mr. Alan Jessen, who is from Denmark. This was my final cover story that I wrote for Guangzhou News. It's December's edition last year. And it was incredible to hear his perspective. He will give a GIC talk, I just don't know when. It's either March, April, or May. So stay tuned for that. You want to come to his GIC talk, believe me. When you see Mr. Alan Jessen, that is a talk you don't want to miss. And one of my final dimensions was to work with the first floor. I enhanced what was already here at the GIC, a welcoming spirit, a sense of people staying and being a part of the community. But I also added music. I added like the fellowship aspect of just bringing people in to just chat, and just an easygoing, relaxing atmosphere. I helped create that, but I didn't do it alone. There have been three other people that have sat with me at the desk, and I've enjoyed each person's contributions there, too. And you guys have made it this and a great place to come to, to relax, too. <clears throat> While I was working there, I also had the honor and privilege of recording every single person that came in. Well, everyone that I could remember. There are probably people that I missed. I'm sure that there are. And even today has been a crazy day here at the GIC even getting ready for this GIC talk. And I'm sure I didn't get everyone. But from what I counted, last year, June to December, we had over 5,000 visitors, first floor. Not counting second floor, just first floor. And already, even today, we've had over 1,000 1, visitors come and visit here. You guys have made that push over to 1,000. As long as you signed in. If you didn't sign in, then I don't know. <laughs> And then I maintained accessibility to certain programs, certain um, functions that were here, and the lights, the heat, the space, the cleaning, everything, as well as if there were problems with any of it. That was my responsibility, to be able to help with any opportunity that came that way. And I worked through it all, both busy and peaceful times. Sometimes, especially on Saturdays, I had too much to do. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't have traded it for going up to the second floor. The first floor is really special. It's a wonderful place that I have enjoyed growing as a coordinator. And again, I got to welcome all visitors. These are two pictures of our actual space. This is just a normal picture that you can see right out here. And this was an event that happened um, that we got to bring in different groups of people. You heard a lot of noise in the other room because people were having a great time continuing an event that continued over. So I was okay with the noise. I hope you guys were too. Um, the sounds are just an opportunity for people to come together and to gather. And I'm glad that there's a space like that. And like here, there is too. My final conclusions as I wrap up my thoughts of this GIC talk are the following. I loved it. I loved working here. I loved every single aspect of my work here. So why am I leaving? I can't answer that right now. It's one of those complicated answers where it's too much to answer right now and probably not in the Q&A session either. But if you're interested, I can talk with you afterwards. I will say, I'm not leaving because I hate the GIC. I'm not leaving because I don't like Dr. Shea, because I really like Dr. Shea. <laughs> I'm leaving for a basic definition, because I'm moving on to a new chapter. I'm ready for it. And it's scary. It's nerve-wracking. It brings on stress onto my body and who I am, and I get all flustered and make stupid decisions. <clears throat> but it's a process. But I loved it here. This position transformed me. It wasn't just a job. It was an actual transformation. Because who I was when I first came to Korea is definitely different than who I am leaving it. I helped harvest my strengths. There are things that I didn't know about myself that I found pretty quickly 
wow, I, I can do this, I can do that. And again, not for pride, but to help people, to always help people. That's what I always brag about. I want to brag about the things that I can do rather than who I am as a person. And assisting. It assisted me to recognize my weaknesses. I'm not good with languages. I have only learned a little bit of Korean. Um, I get stressed out very much when 10, 20 people come to me with different requests and I want to help each person individually, but I can't because there's not time. I can blow up, I can be very angry. <laughs> there's things that I know about myself. And it's good that I saw that so then I can fix it, correct it. And always to keep improving. We should, as human beings, want to improve, not get stuck, not be the same person that we were when we first came into a room. We should want to change. But that's hard. That's a choice. That's something that I need to do for myself. And I always look on this quote with a bit of a laugh. I wonder what it'd be like to work here. Every single time I was in the Jung Yo building and I left to go to my job, to go teach, that was always a thought I had. I wonder what it would be like to work here. And then I think about something else. I wonder what it would be like to do this or to do that and then think about something else. I didn't think it was possible, but you made it possible. You believed in me, Dr. Shin. You believed in what I could do as a person. You have done better than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> it's a man like that that's brought a man here to speak to you today. Because he believed in me. And I started to think I believed in myself, too. Things happen, but things always happen for a reason. I know that. My next chapter, my final slide, is just to share with you my plans. I'm going to rest, hopefully, for two days. <laughs> Maybe a little bit longer. <laughs> but those who know me know that doesn't normally happen. I'm going to travel as well. I plan to visit friends in Daegu, Busan, Seoul, and I have a really close friend who lives in Japan that I'd like to see. Making all their arrangements and preparations is something I always love to do. And I haven't been able to have the chance to do, so we'll probably fit in here somewhere. <laughs> My final preparations are during this week. If you are interested in having dinner, one last meet up with me, feel free to talk to me after this GIC talk. I would love to share a meal with you or some time, coffee, whatever, during this week only. <laughs> These two, I don't have time. <laughs> and then the 23rd is when I fly out of here. This is a day that's been marked since about October of last year. And I've been excited for it and nervous for it and just everything with it. I travel away first to Japan again. Tokyo is where I'm going for one day. Then I go to Mexico for a half a day. I visit a university friend there. And then I'll be in Honduras for one month. Honduras. That is a chance to meet a very good, amazing friend of mine, best friend. His name is Chris, to help with his ministry that he works with. It's called Urban Promise. And it's also a time for me to relax and to reflect. Because I know me. If I go back to America, I will just do, 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 and it won't be healthy. It's not what I need. I need a month where I have no connections, and I need to have that time to rest. And then I'll be home. My home is in Virginia at this time. And then after that, I have no idea. And I'm okay with that. I'm hoping at least to have a job from April to August. I might not have that, but we'll see. We'll wait and see. Thanks for listening. Ashlyn, and I am your Q&A host for today. And so it now begins our Q&A session. For those who might have come in a little bit late, please turn your cell phones on silent or off. And for those of you who did not receive a piece of paper, please put up your hand and one of our volunteers um, will help you. She will give you one. Um, so um, our first question, Joey, can you tell us um, your fondest memory while working at the GIC or being in Korea? 
I have to say, yesterday was pretty amazing. I got this coat. I got a, there's more, there's more, sorry. I got a certificate. I got the chance to say goodbye and to have these moments. But aside from that moment, it's been almost every day there's been something that's been precious and valuable. And sometimes I've been very stressed out that I don't want to recognize that something great came from the day. But I believe that there was something every single day that I worked here. I loved working Saturdays. As crazy as they were, volunteers and interns can attest to that, it was insane here normally. But it was worth it every single time. I went to bed always exhausted but a happy yesterday. So, I'd say almost every day. And yesterday was fun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you think you will miss the most after leaving the GIC and eventually leaving Korea? Everyone in this room, every staff member, every volunteer, every person is what I will miss. You all mean something to me, and I value each and every one of you for different purposes, for different reasons. That's what I will miss the most. If I could just take all of you with me to wherever I'm going to next, then that would be awesome. But that's impossible. Most, I think everyone here wants to stay, yes? They don't want to leave. Maybe some of you want to go. <laughs> that's what I, my desire and hope is that would be a reality. Um, but I will miss every person. Okay. And can you maybe sum up one lesson that you have learned during your time there in Korea, something that you would take with you when you leave Korea? I think the time, like I mentioned earlier, the best gift that you can give is someone your time. And that's really a precious gift there. That's one lesson. <laughs> I think there's many other lessons as well, but the best one that I can think of right now is time. Okay. And where do you see yourself in two years' time? 2018. 2018. Yeah. My heart and my desire is to serve in Christian missions with um, a specific desire to do writing. So what I've been doing for Guangzhou News and for the GIC to help with is to help that way. I don't really care where I end up. I would prefer not America at this time because I don't feel, I love my country, don't get me wrong. I just feel ready and prepared to go somewhere else and to serve somewhere else. So I'd love to go to a place that would really desire and want my assistance with different things, but also a place where I can learn too. So my desire dreams possibly are anywhere in Africa, anywhere in Eastern Europe, anywhere in the Middle East, and maybe, most likely, India. That's a really beautiful country to me. I visited India and Sri Lanka and the whole entire culture is one that it just feels like home. I can't explain it. I can't like share that with you, but it feels like home to me. So for me, it's probably going to be in an international setting and probably not in America. Okay. <laughs> A question from the audience. How do you feel about working with young people or people that don't speak the same language as you? <clears throat> Every person has a talent and a gift. It might not be the same as mine, and that's, that's good. That's better to have. Every one of you has a gift, especially young people have a gift. And what I enjoyed most when I worked with the GIC Junior Talk and the Global uh, Guangzhou Guangzhou Youth Model United Nations was the chance to be able to talk about different topics and different issues. I always saw a chance for people to always grow, not a chance for people to be defined by their status of how much English they've learned or how much retention that they can receive. It was how much that they could grow. When I was a teacher in Thailand to university students and even to my students when I did teach here in Korea, my principle was always, if, one, if every student in my classroom has learned just one thing, then I've done my job right. Not they need to speak this level of English. Not that they can sit in a seat and relax 
and not be fidgety. Not that for university students that they get out of bed every single morning to come to class. Maybe that wasn't their lessons to learn, but if they learned one of those things or something to make themselves better, that was what I wanted to do. And that's what I really wanted for the young people that I interacted with. And um, what advice would you give to someone who would like to volunteer or work at the GIC? How would you go about talking with them or giving them words of wisdom? Talk with me. Talk with you. Talk with the volunteers. Talk to Dr. Shin. Talk to a staff member here. If you're really seriously wanting to make a difference, this is an incredible place to do so. And some of you already have. Thank you. Thank you. You've given incredible contributions to the GIC. It's just starting the page. And it's risky. Maybe there isn't an opportunity right now. Create one. Create a program. Dr. Shin has always desired that this community creates programs by itself. With us as support at the GIC, that can happen. That's a reality. I think it's hard, though, because we want someone to show us the way. Oh, you should do it this way. Oh, you should do it that way. But sometimes it's just making it. Make it until it's done, until it's completed. And that's hard. That's hard to swallow. But just do it. Just do it. <laughs> and we saw that you were in charge of many programs, being a coordinator at the GIC. What do you see for the future of GIC Talk? What is your vision? Of just this program? Yeah. I see a room full of people that are interested, committed to each other and to learning. I see a community that desires to help each other, not just come to a presentation, but to help each other with the different needs that we have. I see who I see today, sitting in these seats in the future. You don't have to do it every single week. But I thank you for a lot of you in the front for coming every single week, because it means a lot to me to see you and to be able to hear your contributions and your stories. So for the GIC talk, it's just a chance for people to really interact and to enjoy each other's presence. We only have time for one more question. Today's talk generated many questions, and if your question was not answered, Joey will be here after the talk is finished, and you can talk with him, and your questions will then be answered. So our last question is, um, what do you think was the biggest benefit of having an international person work for the GIC? Guangzhou International Center. So it all. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that Dr. Shen wanted someone here to start it. I tend to be a guinea pig for a lot of things in my life. For those who don't understand the concept of a guinea pig, it's that you get to do something for the first time. With no instruction manual, with no type of guidance or support. I had a lot of that, granted, I, I have to say that. I had amazing amounts of support. But I didn't know how hard this job would be culturally. This is something that I had to learn on my own how to be able to delegate tasks to other people, how to manage multiple different programs and multiple different tasks and find out, okay, I need to do this today, I need to do that today. But the greatest benefit was having someone like me that differed from other people. And I, I would have to say I'm a very different person than most even international residents. Those who know me very well know I speak my mind and I don't stop until I see something changed. But my heart is always in the place of wanting to help this community. And I loved that opportunity to do so. So I think the greatest benefit is having my voice for those that are international here and a different perspective. And it did clash, believe me. It never was always complimentary. It did clash. But it was necessary to help an international center to grow. So that's all the time we have for today's Q&A session, but let's give Joey another round of applause.